Hi everyone, welcome to Mem Tea. My name's Sue Ann and I'm here to introduce you to three new teas that we're gonna be highlighting for the month of May. Uh, the first is our Taiwanese Spring White. This is a uh, new harvest, Spring 2021, that we're very excited to taste with you. Uh, secondly, we have a Darjeeling. Uh, this is an autumnal flush from the Sungma estate. Um, very tasty tea, uh, black tea. And for herbals uh, this month, I wanted to introduce you to lemon verbena. If you're not familiar with uh, the herb, this one's from Greece. Uh, so um, let's get steeping. So the first tea I want to show you is our Taiwan Spring White. Uh, this is a pre Qingming tea, which means that it's, it was produced before uh, Qingming, which is the Festival of Lights, um, the Asian equivalent to our Memorial Day this year that fell on April 4th. So any tea produced before that um, is usually a very small lot um, because the weather's still extremely cold and so very new, very little new growth has yet uh, to, uh, to come from the bushes. So um, we're happy to have a couple of pre Qingming teas this season. Um, in April is when most of the spring teas will be produced, the first flushes. Um, but before uh, this holiday, we may get a small lot of uh, special production. And that's what this is. So this white tea is, uh, as you'll see from the bag, uh, very large leafed and very kind of lanky. So um, it calls for four heaping um, teaspoons per serving. Um, but I'm just going to eyeball it here because I'm going gong fu. I'm going to make this in a um, in a gaiwan. So I don't really need to be super accurate with my um, my dosing. Um, but if you wanted to uh, try to get four teaspoons, you certainly could. Um, the <clears throat> I love brewing these large leafed teas in, in a gaiwan because it gives them room to kind of sprawl out and expand. And the thought of having to um, compact these leaves into a, 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 a strainer of a teapot um, is, would be a bit of a challenge. The first thing that I did notice when I opened the bag uh, was the aroma of the dry leaf is, um, uh, is very strong. It's very aromatic. This uh, really smells, it reminds me of Darjeeling a little bit. Um, it smells um, like, like a tea factory, <laughs> uh, which is great. We love, we love getting those vibrant spring fragrances um, from, from, from new teas. Um, so the, when you're brewing in a gaiwan, I'm not sure if you're familiar, you know, if you wanted to make sure that you and your guest had equal extractions, you know, you would have to kind of spread the tea back and forth between, um, between your guests. If um, you were concerned about my cup and that's and that's really because I want my cup and your cup to be of equal strength and um, if I was concerned about that what I could do is pour the teas first into the sharing pitcher or fairness pitcher which really kind of mixes all the tea together to make sure that it's all equal in strength and then I would know um, that you and I are experiencing the same cup, which is, um, like I said, really fragrant, um, very flavorful. Um, it, it, it is reminding me a little bit of Darjeeling um, because of this, you know, the name on the bag is referring to the plant or the cultivar, which is actually an oolong uh, cultivar, uh, sometimes made uh, into um, Oriental beauty, which is why we're getting that kind of muscat grape uh, aroma, um, which is very common with um, Darjeeling teas. So this tea uh, we can steep over and over again. It's going to be um, it's going to be a delight um, going forward with it. No astringency, just uh, just 
bright, um, kind of fruity, kind of um, um, herbaceous, um, getting kind of a little bit of a spice marjoram kind of flavor. Um, so I hope you enjoy this one. So this white tea, uh, white tea being the least oxidized of all teas, um, is called white tea because it includes uh, the buds of the tea plant, which have these tiny downy white hairs on them. You can see uh, in this little tiny leaf here, there's, um, that's the new growth. So, uh, but there's also not just the bud, but also uh, we've got the second, third, and even fourth leaf uh, attached to the stem, uh, which is not unusual in oolong picking. And since this is oolong country in Taiwan, um, this would be how they would be plucking the plant uh, to make this white tea. So the white tea is generally just uh, uh, dried in the sun. And you can see some of these leaves were dried faster than others. And the faster the leaf dries, the greener it remains. Whereas if it takes some time, this, this, these darker leaves might have been um, underneath some of the leaves, uh, underneath a pile of leaves, and, and were allowed to oxidize a bit um, before becoming fully dry. Um, you can see the serrated leaf here. This plant looks not too far from um, the oolong that we looked at uh, last month from Nanto. Um, <clears throat> but really a fine plucking here. It's really nice to see all of the uh, fresh leaf, the raw material that this plant has come from. Uh, so hopefully you uh, will get a chance to really examine the leaves and the oxidation after you brew your pot. So next is the Darjeeling from the Sungma estate. Um, this tea is calling for one level teaspoon per cup and I have a two cup um, teapot here so I'm going to use two level teaspoons. Uh, here we go. That looks about level. And we want to use 195 degree water, uh, which is a little less than boiling. Typically black tea can handle boiling water, but um, Darjeeling's tend to be a little assertive, a little astringent, even these autumnals. So we're going to go with a little under and we're going to go with a three minute um, extraction here. So um, you may be familiar with a first flush Darjeeling, a second flush Darjeeling. There is no third flush. Uh, the first flush is produced in April. That's when the trees are just beginning to bud, just like they are here. Um, we usually get uh, a small lot of tea because the weather's still cold there in that, in that time of year. Uh, so cool weather, high elevation, low temperature, um, little sunshine will produce a small lot of tea. Um, in June, the second flush will come about. Um, so we're getting a little bit more sunshine. And then uh, after the second flush is produced, the monsoon rains come. And during that period, the trees are growing so quickly. Everything's growing really fast because of the a great amount of water that the plants are receiving that the teas are um, they lack the complexity and the flavor that the first flush and the second flush um, are really known for so the there is no third flush the monsoon teas are typically put into blends or tea bags um, not exported um, so then if we're lucky after the monsoon rains, the temperature will cool down again and um, a little more sunshine will allow for one last harvest. And that's uh, what we were able to secure um, for this lot. Um, so this is um, <clears throat> uh, a, a nice kind of kind of nutty um, flavor I'm getting uh, or aroma, I should say I'm getting. Um, I like to, this is one way of kind of making sure that the tea is, is mixed 
um, in the in the teapot. You know, we, we don't have a sharing pitcher or a fairness pitcher like we do when we're brewing with the gaiwan. So by uh, taking tea out of the bottom of the pot and then pouring it back into the top, you get uh, you get that mixing of the tea, which is going to allow for equal extraction from uh, otherwise the tea would be weaker on the top than it is on the bottom. But this way um, we get a nice round cup um, for both me and my guest. Um, so this tea has a nice, um, nice amber color. Um, very smooth, very nutty. Um, a little bit of fruit getting some dried f uh, fruit flavors here, a little apricot. Um, with kind of a, a cherry wood maybe in the in the end that would be an, it is an excellent breakfast tea um, but would also be interesting to try as a cold brew so if you've ever cold brewed tea before um, it doesn't involve hot water at all it's just cool uh, cool filtered tap water um, you put your teaspoon of tea per eight ounces, um, like the directions say, and then just let it sit overnight or for a number of hours. The Darjeeling doesn't always take as long as uh, some of the larger leaf teas. So uh, this has been steeping for about five or six hours and you can see it's got that nice amber color already. And then you can just uh, pour it through a sieve and have it over ice or chill it in the refrigerator and it's gonna make for a really tasty brew. So lastly, lemon verbena. Um, this is one of sort of a li little known tea in America, but really a popular herb that is drunk uh, throughout Europe. Um, it, it's, it's a native to South America, Central America, but it was uh, brought um, to Europe in the 1600s, 17th century um, by the Portuguese and the, and the Spanish. And you can see this is um, an example of one of those really large leaf uh, herbal uh, teas. So a lot of times you'll get, um, you'll get if, if you go to buy herbs, they're cut up um, and, they're, and they're not whole like this. Um, what's nice about receiving a whole leaf um, tea is that there's more surface area. It's a more it's, it's a more um, accurate description of, of what's of what's actually in the tea. Just like tea itself, uh, you wouldn't really want to chop up those leaves. That's what happens when you're making tea bags and whatnot. Um, but it, it tends to make for kind of a harsh, cloying. Uh, flavor, especially with a tea like lemon verbena, which has a really high oil content. So um, this is a, an herb again, um, long lanky leaves. So you don't really want to like crush them up and put them in the teapot, but you might have to coax them a little bit if you don't have a nice wide strainer um, as, as this is. Um, and I think I'm just going to kind of stop there at half a pot while the since the leaves are submerged again this is um so this is going to have a lemon lemon flavor um you know lemon verbena is something that we use um in in some of our blend for blending sometimes um it has this nice high oil content so it has a very rich lemony flavor and um, is very good for for your health as well which is why in europe it's often drunk um, after dinner, it's an excellent digestif, uh, and you could um, certainly make um, li a liqueur from it. You could um, infuse uh, the leaves in 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 a in a um, uh, a spirit. Um, it makes it for an excellent um, addition to cocktails by making it into a simple syrup, um, and that can be done by steeping an extra strength um, pot of tea like I'm doing here. That's why I added less water, um, adding some sugar and then chilling it. And then you could also add this um, to, to a soda, to a seltzer water. Um, it would be great to flavor seltzer with, with or without the sugar, really. Um, it has a nice 
um, lemon flavor and a rich body and a nice sweetness to it. So now that we have um, the, the tea, the, the verbena has been steeping for some time, I'm going to just show you quickly how to make a simple syrup with it. So I'm going to take about six ounces of the hot tea, which is brewed extra strong, and then add three tablespoons of sugar and dissolve it while it's hot. So this is something that you can store in your refrigerator indefinitely. Um, it's going to be a nice addition to any kind of summer beverage that you want to enjoy. Um, anything in lieu of lemon, really, it's going to have nice lemony flavor and of course the sweetness of the sugar, which will make it a nice addition to a cocktail or um, in this case, right now, I still have some of my Darjeeling cold brew. So um, I poured some of that over ice, which is of course very tasty on its own, but adding um, a couple of tablespoons of lemon verbena simple syrup is going to um, turn it into a special summer treat. So um, hopefully you can in, uh, fool around with these with these teas um, experiment make uh, some new recipes of your own and share them on social media we'll be sure to love them uh, so for now until next time bon appetit